This is going to be a tutorial on how you can create a Google Form that emails parents about their child's day. To get started, go into your drive and create a new folder. In that folder, you need to create a Google Form. Now to make it easier, in my how-to doc, I have a link here that you can actually just click on and make a copy. Now it says here very clearly, please make a copy, please make a copy. So all you have to do is go into File, Make a Copy, simply rename it, and update from, and then where my name is, put in your name. Go ahead and close the original, delete this from your title, and now you're ready to go. One important tip is to make sure that you keep the link to the live form, this link right here, this URL, private. You really don't want a student happening on this form, filling it out, and then accidentally sending an email to the parent of one of the children from your classes. So it's really important to keep this URL private. So now we can get started with the form. Uh, when refers to the time that you're, that you're discussing in the email. Student, this question we're gonna leave blank for now. We'll come back to it later. A description of the event and additional information. Go ahead and click on view responses and your spreadsheet will appear. Once you've created your form, go ahead and move it right into your family updates. This is the, uh, this is the spreadsheet. Move them into your family updates folder so it's nice and organized. The first thing you need to do is add in three column headers. The first one is student first name. The next one is parent email one and parent email two. Start a new sheet and call this one parent emails. You'll need five column headers, student full name, student first name, student last name, parent email one, and parent email two. In your student full name column, find a class list and paste it in there. And now we're ready for our first formula. We need what's called a split formula so that we can split up the first and last names. Equals split, and you can see the formula pops up right there. Open bracket, select the cell with the first name in it, so A2, comma, where do you want to split it? At the space. So you do quotation, space, quotation, close your bracket. And that automatically splits Alice Jones's name into two cells. Take the little blue box right there, drag it down, and all of your names are split. Now you need to put in the email addresses for each student. For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to use two of my own. Now that I have all the information I need here, I highly recommend putting yourself in last. Drag your formula down once more and put in the email addresses again because you need to have yourself as a test subject. Copy this list of names, go back into your editable form, and in the student question, paste them in. It's really important that the names that you have in your spreadsheet right here are identical character by character to the names that are in this list right here so that the form works properly. Now that your form is done, view your live form and fill it out one time for yourself. So today, Kim Polishuk participated in math. Great work. Submit. And you'll see on the form responses one page that has already showed up. So now we're ready to put in our formulas. Well, the reason we want to use our student's first name is because when we do our email merge, we don't really want to have our student's full name in the email. It's, it, it's not really very personal. So we use a formula called VLOOKUP. Equals V, and it comes up right here. You can choose that last option. Click cell C2. Whatever name appears in cell C2, comma, that means pair it with the parent emails page. Highlight everything in the parent emails page, and I go down way a lot farther in case I have a lot of students. It's okay that it says not applicable here. Come back into your formula. Put a dollar sign in front of the cell references. Dollar sign A in front of the 1, in front of the E, in front of the 56. Comma 2, comma false. Now, the 2 right here represents the fact that the first name is being pulled from column B, which is the second column. 
copy that formula and paste it in both of these parent email columns. Go into the cell. It's okay that it says error. Change the cell reference back to cell C2 and change the column reference to 4 because the first email address is coming from column 4 on the next tab. And same thing here. Change it back to cell C2, 5. And there you go. Your two email addresses were right there. All your formulas are in now. It's time to start putting in your add-ons. Go into the add-ons gallery and search for copy down. Where mine says manage, yours will say free. Click on that. It will ask you to authorize it and you can. And once it's added, go into copy down settings. Simply turn it on. What this means is it's going to pull all of the formulas from the second row, which is where they come from, and it will carry them down every time a new form is submitted. Check off those three boxes and click Save. And that's it for Copy Down. If you scroll over here, you see that Copy Down has been initialized and it's ready to go. Now we're ready for the Formula add-on. Again, go into the Add-ons gallery, search for Formula with two M's where mine says managers will say free, so go ahead and click that. It will also ask you to authorize it. And then go into Formula and say Launch. Sometimes it says Set Up right away, that's okay too. The first thing you'll want to do when this window opens up is select your sheet and make sure you select Form Responses 1. This is the tab in the spreadsheet where all of the data is collected from your Google Form. For now, leave off the triggers and we'll come back to those later. Click Next. You do only want one template. We can name our template Update from Ms. Polishuk. We do want to send it for all rows. Click Next to build your template. These are all of the merge tags and these are created from the headers in your Form Responses 1 page. Click Parent Email 2, then click Parent Email 1 because the second one you click ends up coming up first. Make sure you separate them with a comma. I leave these empty and my subject is an update from Ms. Polishuk about. I'm not going to choose student because that represents the student's full name. I'm going to come down here where it's a student first. This is the student's first name. Put a space in there and what it's going to do is substitute this merge tag with my student's first name. And now I build my template to the parent or guardian of student first name, just be sure to delete this header, comma, when student first name with a space followed by description of incident. Because this will be something like, today Kim participated in math class. You do not need a period right here because if you'll remember in our form the instruction was first of all to start this description of the incident with a lowercase letter because it's going to end up being part of the middle of a sentence and end whatever you write with a period so that will be sure to have this grammatically correct. The next line is additional information followed by please do not reply to this email that's a personal choice. Thank you, Ms. Polishuk. If you want to have this sentence in italics to emphasize it or perhaps bold it, this is HTML friendly. So by adding in a bit of HTML coding, this line will end up in italics. My template is done and I'm going to preview it. My two email addresses appear right here. An update from Ms. Polishuk about Kim. To the parent or guardian of Kim. Today, undefined. So clearly there is a mistake right there. So what I need to do is go back. And you'll notice what I did accidentally right here is I deleted one of the chevrons. So I'll show you again. When you're previewing it, if there's a mistake, which I'm actually glad there is, you simply have to go back to edit, figure out what the mistake is, which is right here. I just need to add in another chevron. Now I can go back to preview this again. Today, Kim participated in math. Great work. Please do not reply to this email. Thank you, Ms. Polishuk. I can now preview and send all. It still gives you another preview before. It says it's going to attempt to send one email because I only have one row filled in on my form. You could read it over again and now you could send. 
And you can tell right here that the update has been sent. Update from Ms. Polishuk. It has the date and the time and the two email addresses that received it. And now I can go ahead and check my board email. Here I have the email subject and update from Ms. Polishuk about Kim. And here it is. The parent gets the email and is notified about their day. So I'm going to go back into my form, submit another response. Yesterday, Kim left her homework in her locker. She must remember to bring her notes to class. Submit. Now you'll see right here, the answer is populated right away in form responses one. The email addresses and the, the student first name was automatically copied down because of the copy down formula. But the email to the parents did not send and that's because we haven't set it to trigger on submit. This is a personal choice. I don't trigger it on submit because I like to review them at the end of every day just to make sure there isn't a reason why I don't want it to send. So if you do want it to trigger on submit, go back into the formula setup. And right here you can change this off to on. And what that means is every single time you press submit, an email will be sent immediately to the parents. The other option you have, which I think might be a better one when you're dealing with emailing parents about a child's day, is a timed trigger. If you turn this one on, you can set a specific date and time. And I would use a day timer, and I would send them right around dinner time, 5 to 6 p.m. That gives you as the teacher time at the end of the day to decide whether or not you want to send every message home. And that gives the parent time to receive the email, hopefully at dinner time when their kids are with them. And everything else stays the same, so you can actually just save everything and close it. So now that won't run until 5 to 6 p.m. tonight. Let's say at the end of the day a student has come to you and said, you know what, Ms. P, I'm really sorry I didn't do my homework last night. Would you mind not sending that email to my parents? I promise I'll have it done tomorrow. And you really want to give them a chance. To trick Formula, what you need to do is go into this box and just type any letter. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Just type anything in there and Formula will think that this email has already been sent and it will skip over it. If you do want to keep it on a manual submission, um, what you would do at the end of every day, if I fill it out again, today Kim All you would have to do is go back into the add-ons gallery at the end of every day, go into the formula add-on, and instead of going through setup, just go right down to preview and send all. You know your template's already been built correctly, so this will take you right to the preview screen before you need to send them. And you'll see here it actually says I only need to send one because remember I'm tricking it and I put not applicable in this row, so it thinks it's already been sent. And here's my email, I go ahead and click send. An email was sent to the following email addresses at this date on this time. And if I flip back to my board email again, here it is, and there's the email. And that's Formula. If you have any questions, feel free to find me at Inquire and Inspire or on Twitter at Kim Polishuk. I hope this was helpful.